Hello and welcome to Simon's Discoveries. That's right. I'm in the desert. The Death Valley. You know, the one thing that really struck me here was the thing that you hear, or rather, don't hear. Just listen to this for, for a second. That's right. The silence is actually piercing my ears. So today I wanted to talk to you about the difference between the bushcraft or traditional camping and the modern time type camping. And the way I see it, the traditional or bushcraft camping is the one that makes you not rely on the outside sources like propane tanks and stuff like this, modern materials. And the mo modern camping, like the name suggests, is viewed as the more environmentally friendly, the leave no trace idea and all that. That's what I associate with the modern style camping. And it kind of makes sense in certain areas like this, you can't really do bushcraft camping for various reasons. First of all, just take a look around. What do you see? Could you make a fire here? Could you purify water? You couldn't even find water. You couldn't, couldn't even find fuel for fire. Native people probably lived somewhere in the neighborhood, but most definitely not here, because there is absolutely nothing here that you could eat, you could drink or use for fuel. So certain, that's one thing. And another thing is this is a national park and you probably shouldn't and most likely couldn't make a fire here, uh, cut down trees if you found any, use natural resources. It's just not viewed as appropriate and I'm pretty sure it's illegal. So camping and hiking the modern style includes using one of these. I don't know what you call them, the camelback, the bladder or whatever. So people going out with these assume that they will not find water or they will not need to look for water. And it's a good idea in a place like this, in the desert, you can't really expect yourself to find water when you need it. So because this bladder is about two liters capacity and there are even bigger than this one, seems like a good idea, right? So I decided to go for one and see how this works. And you know what, <clears throat> when I first tasted this, and this tastes like shit, I don't know what happened to this water, but unless I'm dying, I ain't drinking this. So I guess what I'm saying is I jumped the world in a, in a way as well. Sometimes I go completely traditional bushcraft camping, sometimes like today, I'm forced to be the modern camper hiker. But the thing that I like about the traditional bushcraft camping the most, probably the most, is that most of my equipment is extremely versatile. Let's just take my hat, for example. My wife's hat, she just bought one because she needed one out here in the desert. And she bought some really a great desert hat that protects her from the sun. And when I put it on my head, it was fantastic. I mean, I could feel that the light breeze coming through because it had some ventilation in it and all that so it works really nice and this even though i like my hat very well i felt like it was really doing its job but i will still stick to my hat my woolen felt hat simply for the reason that when i go out i don't need my hat to do just one thing and that's the problem with her hat it's great out in the desert when it's sunny but it's completely useless when it's gonna when it's raining this will do in the rain this will protect me from the sun so i basically just love it for its versatility and it's it goes for pretty much everything that you have like and we mentioned that camel bag or the, the the bladder or whatever and the thing is it's great in one thing and one thing only it takes quite a lot of water you can 
carry comfortably carry quite a lot of water with you but it's useless for pretty much anything else that's why I, I didn't trust it because I hadn't used it before and I knew there could be problems with it so that's why I brought my stainless steel water bottle and I'm drinking from it because really it tastes so much better and if I need if I need to I can use it to boil water in it I can do all sorts of different stuff yeah it's very basically very versatile like pretty much everything else in traditional bushcraft and this is probably the point that I'm trying to make here that uh, you know the modern style equipment for modern hiking is very specialized like everything in this world nowadays it gets more and more specialized people are really good at one thing but absolutely useless at something else and i can understand this because especially when it comes to like high mountain climbing and stuff like this you know back in the day people weren't able to go that high for that long or even climb certain mountains at all and of course that's great because it makes people able to do things that we were never able to do before but you know that's also the reason why I retreat to traditional bushcraft because I'm, I don't want to be an ant worker that is specialized in one thing only does its job perfectly but can do absolutely nothing else obviously this is a slight exaggeration because people climbing mountains can do a lot of different things but their equipment cannot and I think this is why I'm sticking to bushcraft as the traditional style of camping whenever I can because for me you know this isn't comp this isn't a competition at least it's not supposed to be from my point of view so I'm just trying to have fun here and what I see here is just people trying to push more and more specialized equipment saying that this is good for you it's gonna look good and people won't even go you know on a hike without some fancy looking clothes and stuff like this this is just not what I do so the reason why I like hiking and camping in general is not so I can see I don't do it just to see places that certain people agreed on as being worth seeing I just like exploring you know just want to go and see some new places I mean it may not be new to everybody because obviously people have been everywhere but it's it's new to me you know there is no one else here so it feels like at least for a few moments this place is mine so yeah you may think I'm a weirdo but sometimes I don't even like to come back the same way I came to a certain place that's what I'm saying I don't like to go you know into a certain place and wait in a freaking queue for hours just so I can see something that everyone else thought would interest me you know I'm a cactus lover cactus enthusiast so when I see something like this I'm sold completely I'm, I, I'm just loving this place and there is nobody here because they don't think this is interesting you know because nobody told them this would be interesting and I think that's why bushcraft helps so much with it because it's so versatile and every piece of equipment that you use bushcrafting is so versatile of course I use modern materials bushcrafting as well because I you know there is no 100% primitive these days unless you go with just stone tools that you made out in the field but I'm, I'm, I'm using clothes I'm gonna have to use a knife sooner or later and even though I may be able to make a knife myself I certainly won't be able to find iron ore and make steel and then forge it without tools that's just ridiculous and impossible but if we look at this from this perspective versatility versus special specialization then you have to realize that bushcraft camping traditional camping is a lot less efficient it takes a lot more effort and costs a lot more work to camp like this you know you you're relying basically everything revolves around fire so making fire and looking after fire it's a never-ending story you know first you have to find and collect firewood kindling tinder then you have to keep watching it it never burns evenly so you have to keep mending it it takes a lot of time whereas where you take a propane tank you can easily adjust the flame turn it off just like that turn it on just like that tuck it aside no preparation needed 
Same when it comes to sleeping. Pitching a tent takes minutes. Making a proper shelter out of branches and grasses, dry grasses and stuff like this may take hours depending on where you are and what you want to achieve. If you have to move camps every single day, that's probably not the best idea to make shelter out of natural materials every single time and waste hours on end just to be able to sleep well. And this is probably why so many people assume that this is the more environmentally friendly way of camping because you don't use the resources around you. But is it really? I mean, someone must have made this propane tank, filled it up with something, then ship it over to your country so you can buy it in the shop. Same goes for your tent or your sleeping bag. This stuff must have been made somewhere out of some possibly toxic crap using some using a lot of energy and then it still has to be shipped burning fuel so we're not gonna avoid leaving traces that's impossible what we're really avoiding here is leaving traces in the most valuable protected areas and as usually this boils down to the scale of the whole phenomenon you know, if there was hundreds of us, this vast area wouldn't even notice if I take a few dead branches and make a fire. That valley wouldn't mind. But there are hundreds of thousands of probably even millions of people visiting this place. And we got lost. But as I say, if you don't get lost, where's the fun in that? All right, guys, thanks for watching. Try to lose yourself in the woods or in the desert. Have fun and see you next time.